Hello everyone and welcome to this another episode of 3D prototyping in Unity. My name is Kisanas and the last episode we took care of of our camera. We actually all took a look at the camera together, the default Unity camera. And I hopefully we're all on the same page now. In today's episode I'd like to take a look at setting up the character so it's ready to go into the game. All right? Let's get started. Okay guys, so today we're going to set up our character, just the basic character. And for some of you this might be a review, if you followed along with my other series this might be a review. But for many of you who are just joining me for the first time, uh, I'm going to still go over it in some detail here. If you're thinking, uh, you'll be covering everything here, don't worry. You don't have to have watched my other series in order to participate in this one. Alright, so to start off with, hopefully I've given you guys uh, all a bunch of models, etc. in assets. Uh, look at the link down below if you don't have it yet. Look at the link down below and you should find it. Um, look for the character that's called Sheridan Cinema. And when you first see it, it'll look like this. Alright, if you just click on it, uh, there are a number of different tabs, model, rig, and animations. Uh, if you click on the little arrow here, it's going to open up the entire thing so you can see exactly what's included within that character. We're going to ignore the model and we're going to ignore the rig for now. We don't really need anything within either of these for the time being. We're going to go straight to animations. And what we want to do is set up our animations so that we've got a number of them instead of just one, which you're seeing right down here called take one. If we take a look at what that is, if I hit play right here, you can see that take one includes all of the animations included with this character. Okay, We're not using them all in this series, we're only using a couple of them. Uh, and you can add them if you want to later on, but I'm going to show you the ones that we're going to use right now. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is make sure that import animation was selected, and it was, which is great, and resample curves, fine. We want to make sure that keyframe reduction, let's turn this off. For now, we're going to turn it to off, just completely off. And the reason why I do that is, is Unity does, does its best to go through and resample the curves to, to give the, the, the line of best fit. And sometimes that causes the animation to look a little bit funny. If you find that your animation, whenever you add your own character in, if you find your animation is maybe sliding around or something like that, then try turning off the animation compression. When you do that, every single key that's supposed to be there will be there. Okay? So we're going to leave it like that. Now, the next thing we're going to do down here we've got take one and like I said take one is all of our animation in its total we don't need them all alright we need a couple of them t-pose t-pose I always start off my character with it in a t-pose it makes things like uh, building a ragdoll uh, using the ragdoll wizard or something like that much easier later on okay so starting off with t-pose that goes from frame one to frame one alright then hit the little plus sign. And we've got a number of different things in here. We've got a walk, which I'll add. Uh, walk, oops, spell it right, walk. And walk is going to go from frame five to frame uh, 28, 28. And it is looped, all right, plus. And now we're gonna add a run. So this is our run. Our run is going to go from frame 33 to frame 45. And I know these numbers because I did this animation. You guys will have your own numbers if you've done your own animation. And once again, that is going to be looped. And once again, plus. Uh, we're going to add in a number of idols. Uh, I've got an idle left. Idle left. I have an idle right, an idle left, a shift left, and a shift right. And this is basically, I added all these in to basically give me some variation in the idols. I don't want just a standard idle. I end up using this, this, uh, these idols uh, for my, for some of my cutscenes and that kind of stuff as well. So anyway, the idle left goes from 99 to frame 146. It is looped and plus. The next one we're going to add is our shift right. Shift right and that's going to go from frames 150 to frame 175 175 it is not looped i'm going to add another one a shift we're going to add our idle right idle right and our idle right goes from frame 178 to frames 100 or sorry 226 226 it is looped i'm going to say plus one more time and I'm going to add a shift left, and our shift left goes from frames 229, 229, to frame 254. It is not looped, and the very last one we're going to add is our reward pose. Reward pose, whoops, reward pose, and reward pose is going to go from frames 256 
all the way to the end, 296, and it is not looped. All right. Everything else for now, down here, you can ignore. The last thing you're going to do is, is hit Apply. Bam! And when you do, you're going to see down here where originally had only one take, only one animation was showing in our assets. We now can see a number of different animations, our idols, all the way through our walks. All of them should appear there. If you want to see any one of these, if you're not sure if you have the right numbers in, at any time you can go in and pick, let's say, the run, and you can go down here and you can hit play and make sure that it is operating as expected. So there I can see my run is working as I like. Okay, great. So that is our character setup. So to create the character for this actual game, what you're going to do, just going to simply find the character right here. You can close this up if you want. Find the character, drag it, and drop it on the screen. Uh, I'm going to reset this so it goes to zero. So right now I know it's at the origin, and it's teeny, 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 tiny. Let's focus in on that. There it is. It's teeny, teeny, tiny. Now, normally I like to scale this guy up depending on what you brought it in at. Depends on what your import settings were. Uh, I think I left mine very small, uh, so I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it up to one, to ten. So this is ten times the scale. Okay, uh, and with that in place, we can take a look right now, and we can see this character is completely gray. I did not include any of the materials in the asset package that I'd given you, so you're gonna have to go through and create yourself some materials. So to do so, very very simple. I'm going to go, I've created a materials folder already, and uh, I'm going to create this first one for you, and the remainder of them you're going to be in charge of creating on your own. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say create, I'm going to say create a new material, bang, just like that, and let's call this the player material. It doesn't really matter what you call it. And I'm going to leave it as the standard, uh, as a standard shader. Uh, I'm going to leave it as that. I'm going to leave it as opaque as well. And uh, basically what I want to do, I've got myself a number of textures and all of these textures I've included for you. I'm going to find the texture I want to use, which is this one right here. It's called Sheridan Yellow. I'm going to click on it. Now there's a couple of things that I want to make sure. If, okay, actually, you know what, let's build that, let's build that material first so you can see what I'm saying. So let's go back to the material. The albedo right here, the albedo is going to be that Sheridan Yellow. So I'm going to scroll down, I'm going to find it, and I'm going to add it. And once I do, I should see it right there. Perfect. All right, and I'm just going to turn down the smoothness. Uh, I don't know if I've discussed materials in, in great detail yet, uh, but the, this is the, the metallic. Uh, this is part of the metallic smoothness, and the less smooth you have, the, more, uh, the less uh, of a specular reflection you're going to get from this object, the less metallic this object actually is. If I turn it way up, you can see down here that I've got myself a shiny, very reflective material, and smoothness refers to the number of micro um, micro marks or micro incisions or micro whatever you cuts or whatever you want to call it, uh, roughness of this actual material. By having it way up here at one, it is very smooth and highly reflective, and by turning it way down to zero, you're getting kind of this, this uh, rough surface. Now, I like to use this uh, smoothness of zero for this type of character. You guys can decide how you want your own game to look. It's gonna, it's just personal preference. That's all it really is. I'm not gonna change any of the other things for now. But what I am gonna do is I'm gonna add this material to my character. And to do so, I can simply grab the material, drag it, and drop it on the character on all the different parts. So I'm gonna drop it on each of the mesh pieces. And bam, 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 I've got myself a character. Now, some, some of you will say, oh, mine doesn't look like that. And it might not. Let's go back to our texture for a minute. Your texture comes in. I've made some modifications to this texture, uh, and you're going to have to do the same thing. The default comes in as bilinear, and it comes in as compressed. So if we take a look right now at this texture, everything looks blurry and fuzzy. And a lot of you guys are saying, oh, no, mine looks blurry and fuzzy. Don't worry about it. We're going to get rid of that right now. And it's as easy as changing the filter node to point filter, and you'll automatically crisp it up. Automatically. All right, you can leave it as compressed if you want to, or you can change it to true color. It's really up to you. If you're noticing some kind of strange color, change it to true color, and you'll and you'll you'll get the colors that you originally designed. Okay, so that is our character set up as far as a texture and everything is concerned. Now, this character does have animations associated with it, but none of them are working right now. Uh, we're going to add a couple more things to our character. Let's go in here right now. Let's click on our Sheridan Cinema, and you can rename this, apply this. You can rename this if you want to, to player or something else. It's up to you. I am going to tag this immediately under the tag as player. Now, these these tags have been our default tags. Later on, we're going to add more. For now, 
just choose the player tag for this one. Okay, the default layer is perfectly fine. Now you're going to notice that our character has a number of different things. It has a transform uh, node which allows us to move it about. It's got an animator which is going to allow us to set up the animations later on. We do need a couple of things for this character to be able to interact with the, with the physics engine and interact with the environment. The very first thing I'm going to add, add component, I'm going to add a, in the physics, I'm going to add a character, uh, no, sorry, I'm going to add a uh, capsule collider. Boom! And when I do, it's really big. <laughs> It's really big, and that's perfectly fine. We're going to make some adjustments to our, our, our capsule collider right now. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do, and that's simply because of the size of my character, all right? Um, I always put my characters in very, very teeny. If you've brought your character in differently, if you've got a different asset you're using for your game, then you're going to have to make different adjustments than I am right here, all right? So for now, my magic numbers are radius of decimal 08 and a height value of decimal 35. Oops, 35. And lastly, we're going to move this up the center position in the Y to decimal 1.7. And if we take a look at this character right now, uh, this capsule collider is surrounding my character's body, and it goes right down to the feet. It's a little bit lower than the feet. I could probably shift this up a little tiny bit to get a little bit better contact with the ground if I was truly worried about it. You really want the contact with the ground to be to be pretty precise. Otherwise, your character's going to be floating off the ground. And in this case here, where I'm going to end up with a, with a three-quarter camera like this, uh, I really don't care that it's floating off the ground a little bit. You guys can go in and make the adjustments depending on what type of camera you ultimately decide to use for whatever game you're creating. Okay, perfect. Now, the, the collider that I've chosen here, you can choose any collider you want. And you'll notice that I've got it uh, kind of surrounding the character. If his arms are down, it's going to be really surrounding the character. Uh, this collider ends up being the hitbox for the character, determines when it's in collision, when it's colliding with other things like walls or boxes or, or other, other triggers or whatever. So you want to make sure that this collider is surrounding your character in a relatively decent manner. If this was a precise shooter, obviously you could shoot my character way over here. The hitbox for this character would be way over here in the corner. If I was actually making a shooter where precision mattered, I would probably go through and add in colliders for individual parts as opposed to a grand collider like this but for the game we're creating here having one big collider works perfectly fine okay so that is my collider now if I hit play nothing's gonna happen my character's just gonna stand there it has no gravity effect the camera's in the wrong location <laughs> there's a bunch of stuff going on here in fact I probably should have rotated my character uh, did I ultimately do that no I guess I didn't all right it doesn't really matter but let's turn it off for now um, so that is our actual character but nothing actually happens whenever we we hit play what we want to do, this is going to be a gravity-based game, so we're going to go through here and we're going to add another component, add component, and I'm going to add physics, and I'm going to add a rigid body. Boom! And what I do, we automatically come up with this rigid body. Now, we can make some adjustments to this rigid body later on. Uh, for now, we're going to use everything exactly as it is. We're not going to touch it in any way. Later on, you might want to change the mass of your character, depending on how much physics you're using, how much how many forces you're applying to this character. You might want to go through and change the mass appropriately. You might want to add some different stuff in here, but that's going to be up to you guys for later on. Okay? Now, when I hit play, boop! My character falls away, so we know the rigid body is acting appropriately, the character is moving along, and is being sucked along by gravity, which is exactly what we wanted. That's awesome. Okay, so our character falls all the way to the ground, and obviously that is not something we want. We want our character to be able to, to land on something. We want to build an environment that the character is going to land on. So for now, I'll set up a single platform, and afterwards you guys can go through and build the environment you want. We'll take a look at other things like the walls and that kind of thing a little bit later. For now, all we're going to do, we're going to go back to models right here. I hopefully included for you this thing called a floor. All right, it's going to be an OBJ file. You can drag it in. Um, floor itself is going to have some uh, adjustments made to it. Let me just make sure I get my magic numbers out of here. Walls and floor. Okay, so our floor, let's take a look at it here. Uh, there it is. It's really, really, really big. All right, and obviously I don't want it so big. First thing I'm going to do is make sure I reset it. A reset so it's located at our, at our origin. And our character is inside there really teeny tiny. What I want to do is I'm going to reset my scale. My scale is going to go to 0 0.025, 0 0.025, and 0 0.025. Oops, 2.5. 2.5. All right, let's focus in on that. 
All right, so there is our slab of floor. Now, if we take a look at what floor includes, we've got ourselves floor, we've got ourselves free floating floor. And right now, there's not a whole lot included in either one. Floor itself has a transform node that allows us to move it about, and free floating floor uh, has a number of different things that allows the mesh to actually show up. A transform, so again, we can move it about, the mesh filter itself, and the mesh render that allows us to show it, and it's got itself a floor material, free floating floor material. If yours doesn't have this, then you're going to have to go through and add in the material as well. I don't, it, it, when you import these things here, sometimes the material is automatically made. The uh, material that's automatically made for the character wasn't the proper one, uh, and that's why I showed you how to do it. If, however, you don't have this free floating floor material that's automatically included in your project, then you're going to have to go through and, and adjust it yourself. Remake this material and add it exactly the way I showed you. Okay, so there's our free floating floor. Now, if I hit play right now, watch what happens. Our character just falls right through the floor, and that still sucks. That does not exactly what we want to happen. We're going to have to decide, we're going to have to add a collider. Now, the collider itself, a collider itself allows two objects, two colliders, to come together and be, uh, to affect each other, depending on what mode you actually have it in. Um, ours currently is in, uh, our currently character is in a normal, where is our collider right here it's in a non-trigger state and we want to do the same thing with our floor now we have a couple of options on how to add this collider so I'm gonna leave it up to you guys to decide exactly how to have it how you add it and where now the collider itself can be added to this each individual floor piece and for the game that I created that's what I did I made an individual floor piece uh, and I saved that as a as a prefab and I was able to just add those into place over and over and over again so to create a prefab or to create a, an individual floor piece, all I did is I have to add a collider to one of these, okay? If you add a collider to this top level, to floor, if you add the collider here, then what's going to happen is it's going to put in a collider and you'll have to adjust it to whatever size you determine is the appropriate size for your collider to be. If you add a collider to this layer, so if I say add collider right now, and I'm simply going to say add physics, and I'm going to say box collider, the box collider will be exactly the right size uh, to the mesh. Okay, So it's going to be up to you to either add it to this one here or to add it to the top layer. It doesn't really matter. Uh, in our case, it doesn't really matter where you add this collider. In other cases, it's going to, but for the case of the floor, it does not really matter where you add this collider. Okay, So right now, I've got myself this floor piece. If I hit play now, my character will fall, land on the floor, and stay. All right, and that's exactly what we want to happen. What we want to do now is I'm going to add a brand new, I'm going to go to my assets, I'm going to right click, I'm going to say create, and I'm going to add a brand new folder that I'm going to call prefab, z prefabs. And right now there's nothing in it, obviously. I'm going to grab this floor, I'm going to drag it, and I'm going to drop it in place. Okay, and this is going to allow me to continually add more and more floors. So if I want to, I can simply say, Boom, I can add a new floor. Let's let's zero this out. Let's put it at zero, 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 and zero. And I can adjust this wherever I want. There we go. I've got another piece of floor here, and my character can run across both of those pieces of floor. So you might say, hey, that's a great idea. I'm going to do it exactly like that. And this is how I did it. That's perfectly fine. Uh, I'm a big believer in building little pieces of things and then adding them together to make one one larger piece that allows for you know map building, etc. What you might want to do, however, instead of doing something like this, you might want to create all of your floor models. So you're not going to actually add this collider in. You're going to remove that collider. And what you might want to do is add all of your floor pieces in. And once all of the floor pieces are in, you might want to add an overriding collider on the entire floor. Uh, it's up to you how you do it. Uh, I don't know which one's better, to be honest. I honestly don't know which one's better. Uh, the way that I do it like this, oftentimes uh, you might end up with overlapping colliders. You might end up with stuff like that if you don't line them up exactly. For example, if I if I for some reason made a little mistake and I had my my floor misaligned like this, well, my character, if I've created the character in a in a in the manner that won't let it climb over over things, my character's not going to go past this point. So there's some some dangers with having individual colliders like this uh, and uh, but you know I don't have to worry about adding a collider one collider at the end uh, and the other way you can add one collider at the end and you never have to really worry about something like this so it's gonna be up to you how you guys build the floors all right so bam let's get rid of this for now let's get rid of free floating floor one I don't need it right now we'll bat we'll actually build our, our layer up later on all right so that's it one last thing that I want to do is take a look at the base animation for this character so right now, whenever I hit play, let's hit play one more time, boom, 
when I hit play, my character lands and stands in the T-pose, and that's not what we want. We want this character to automatically go into uh, some type of animation. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to click on our character right here, select our character, and we've already got an animator node. We've already got an animator node up here, but it does not actually contain the appropriate stuff to, to make this character animate. So, I built myself this animation folder. I'm going to go to the animation folder. I'm going to right click. I'm going to say create, and I'm going to say create animator controller right here. Boom. And it's going to say, what is it called? Let's call it uh, player AC. It doesn't matter what you call it. So there's player AC. I want to go over to my shared and cinema character again, and you guys should probably rename this to player or something. Let's rename this to player. <laughs> okay, so there's player. Uh, and I'm going to go over here. I'm going to find the animator node. I'm going to grab player AC. I'm going to drag it, and I'm going to drop it right under the location that says controller. Perfect. That controller now allows me to start building an animation, uh, an animation state machine. So if I click on animator, there's an animator note, uh, animator tab here. If you don't have it, you can go to window, find animator, and select it, and it's going to pop up this tab for you. When I select this tab right here, this animator window right now is showing me the player AC because I've got my player selected. It's showing me my player animation controller, animator controller, and currently there is nothing in here. My state machine is completely empty. For now, all I want to do is set up my, my default state. And my default state, I want to be my idle. And for the char this character, I'm not going to go through and have it go through. Let's go take a look at our model one more time. Let's take a look at our model. We actually set up a bunch of, we set up our idle left, our idle right, uh, our shift left and our shift right, wherever they are, down here, shift right, shift left. We've got all of those in there. And for this character, I'm not going to have it go through each one. I'm not going to have it cycle through. Uh, I'm ultimately going to use the idle left and idle right, and the shift left and the shift right uh, during my cutscenes, uh, but I don't want it for this character. For th this type of game, and you can do it, I'm not saying you can't do it, but for what I'm trying to do in this game here, uh, I really want to focus on cinematography rather than uh, any of this other additional stuff I'm looking at here. Uh, if you're interested in how to create a, a, a more dynamic idle, uh, you can take a look at one of my other series to do so. All right, anyway, for now, all I'm going to do is with my with my model selected and my animation showing, I'm going to grab idle left, I'm going to drag it, I'm going to drop it on the, on the screen. That's it. And now this little box is going to show up. It's going to turn orange, indicating that's my default state. And once I hit play, bam, my character will automatically go into that idle animation. Okay? It's going to remain that idle animation forever because it's looping around and around and around again. Okay, guys? So, that's it. That's all I really want to show you guys for this, this setup. This character is now ready to be used. We'll take a look at actually creating the camera. Uh, no, sorry, the movement next uh, in the next episode so your character can run about. Uh, we'll start getting a little bit into code. Right now, we've done no code at all. I know lots of people are a little bit afraid of code, uh, so we're not going to worry about that uh, until next episode. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. Hopefully, you're following along, and hopefully, you're really excited about doing some cinematography theory and techniques within this game. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Thumbs up, thumbs down, comments down below, and if you haven't done so, please take a few seconds to subscribe. Have yourselves a wonderful day, everyone.